Shalom. This is Unplug em with the last installment. We're going to get a little bit uh, deeper into the medicine, health care, and eating issues. Uh, we want to get into the fun part now, the occult aspect. Uh, parts one and two, I wanted to deal with the basis, lay down some foundation. Now that that's done, let's get into it. Uh, we want to cover the secrets of medicine. We want to cover the, uh, the problem with medicine. The dope that gives you hope, <laughs> keeping hope alive instead of keeping you alive. Then we want to get into the caduceus to seduce us. <laughs> uh, the symbol of the American Medical Association, the symbol you find on many doctor's offices, the symbol you find on your medication, uh, and what that's really all about and how that relates directly to not only the serpentine intervention that we find going all the way back to ancient Egypt, uh, ancient Kemet, but we also uh, want to uh, relate that to Project Janus, which I just did uh, a couple of videos on, and if you haven't checked those out, you might want to. And then the last but not least, we want to look at the medical or medic L practice. Patience, patience, because, again, the, the worship of this false god, this uh, false industry uh, that people do treat like a god, like Al, Allah, or El, 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 uh, it causes people to have to have patience. The patients have to have much patience because if they're waiting for a cure, they're going to be waiting for a long, long time, longer than you wait in the waiting rooms at uh, receiving hospitals and uh, emergency rooms across the nation. And, of course, that will bring us uh, finally into Hippocrates, uh, the hypocrites of Hippocrates, keepers of an oath to a false god and necromancy afoot, and how doctors are not unlike others who are um, bound in bondage, bound to secret societies, and uh, the oath that they take makes them not only have to make some serious compromises that compromise your health and their reputation, but also that um, brings them into the area of necromancy and the magic, the ritual uh, that all secret society members have to have some overstanding of doctors have a special place in that whole dynamic the whole occult dynamic the fact that they are working with uh, cadavers and dead bodies all of the time and their um their use of latin in their given practice in their given field and it's no coincidence that latin is the dead language that you find used in witchcraft most often all throughout the harry potter movies you find the spells that they're casting are actual witchcraft spells actually uh, written and cast out of the dead language of Latin, the la language of ancient Rome, which is the place that you find uh, Janus, the double-headed deity, uh, ruling and reigning as uh, January number one, uh, rules and reigns among the months as number one. So uh, let's just kind of jump into this thing here, and uh, let's go into it. Now, unfinished business always first, and then then we want to jump into the current thing. So we ended off with the red sauces and how they appeal to the animal in you, the blood. Uh, some people, uh, certain types of people especially, prefer their meat to be rare, which rare means uncommon and not the usual thing, strange indeed. And uh, to have bloody meat not only is a strange thing, but is it, it is a thing that goes against the practices that are advised by the prophets by way of the Most High, who says that the life of a thing is in a blood and who also uh, gives us very strict rules against eating of things that are bloody. You find that in Genesis. Uh, to be exact, you find that in Genesis, bear with me for a second, Genesis 9 and 3. So, uh, that's stated there clearly. If you are a person who insists upon eating your steak raw, you may want to uh, double think that. <laughs> well, you're already in double think. You may want to single think that and get that out of your mind, uh, uh, realizing that the, the steak itself is a dead piece of flesh and offers you no life but the blood in it itself is um, that's where the occult part comes in the ingestion of blood 
is part of ritual sacrifice and has been since uh, the days of the Maya and even before that time, going back to the time of the fallen angels, who we know in the book of Enoch were um, eating human beings. And um, this does a psychological connection back to that time because it is not common or usual for us to eat things that are bloody and, and let alone uh, to take in that wild nature that is not the nature of man but the nature of beast. So today's environment is much more toxic than it was back in the other season, back in the ancient season. And that's why you need seasonings and seasons on your meat because it actually has no good taste and no no nutritional value, but no good taste without the seasons, without the seasoning. And, um, you know, seasons come from herbs. Herbs are sprung up in different seasons. And that's where the name uh, derives from, originates. So uh, some of the problems that you get from not eating properly, uh, we, we know about uh, heart attacks. We know about strokes because these are... Uh, sicknesses and illnesses caused by obstruction in the blood flow and bad skin breaking out which is that's the body pushing out stuff that should not be in there toxins through the skin getting pushed out uh, and bad diet is the number one thing that causes these toxins to build up in and under the skin. You can look at, uh, you know, one of the first things I noticed about the Nation of Islam uh, before I joined when I was a young man around 18 uh, was how clear their faces were. And yes, they used some good products, but uh, it directly had to do with the fact that these were the first people that I saw grouped together who did not eat pork. And I was used to seeing people who ate pork. And so you're used to seeing a certain skin condition. Uh, among your average people in the hood. But uh, when I began to look at the mu Muslim community, there was this way that their face was devoid of something. It was lacking something. It was lacking that poisonous, um, toxic undertone that you see normally in our faces and also in our eyes. Uh, again, going back up to what I said earlier about the eyes, in case you missed it, yes, you have two eyes and one focus uh, to prove it, Look a person in their left eye purposely when you're talking to them. They will feel eerie and so will you. Well, that goes back to the spell of spelling and why it's called the right eye. The right eye, right is a word uh, that has many definitions. And so does I have more than one definition. And so right eye is really a way, a coded way to say the correct self. Everything is split in half. There is duality to the human body. And there is a right side and a wrong side, or a right side and a left side. It's why the Antichrist is said to have a shining left eye, and why when you see the Illuminists uh, do their little pose, and Jay-Z and the other peons do their little um, uh, um, all-seeing eye symbol through the pyramid, they do it over the left eye primarily, because it is the left eye that is supposed to represent the sin self. And in ancient times, uh, in, in Old English, the word left had to do with sin, and the word right had to do with righteousness or correctness. So your right eye and your left eye are different. This is, this is about your balance. And so that's when we went down in, into the uh, acidic versus alkaline, which is all about balance, your pH balance, uh, and making sure that you don't lean on your left side, which is what we do when we give in to uh, our sense of touch, which when you say you have five senses. All five of the senses that they name is really aspects of one sense, which is touch. They make us touch junkies. So as touch junkies, we are out of touch. We're out of mind. We don't want to go out of our heads and be out of time. So you don't like the taste of God's good things. Uh, evil is made fair-seeming. But he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's easier on your body. If you eat right, respect his temple, cast out the unclean abomination or suffer an issue in your tissue. And you can cancel my subscription. I don't want your issues. So if you want to avoid these issues, uh, you want to uh, begin to change your diet. Look again at the words around you surrounding medicine and pharmacia. So let's jump into that. I believe we've, we've killed this book. 
All right. Now, medicine, the dope that gives us hope. Medicine primarily comes from uh, herbs originally, okay? Your shaman, your magic men, your witch doctors. These were the uh, individuals who um, understood the workings of herbs, the workings of roots, and what roots and herbs to take for what ailments, how they affected the human body. Well, surprise, surprise, this was learned by the fallen angels. Now, some of the things that the fallen angels left us with, the Most High in His infinite wisdom, uh, like the old folks said, what the devil made for bad, God makes for good. The Most High in His infinite wisdom gave permissive will and allowed for us to still continue on and use these things and to even turn them around for good, uh, and medicine was one of those things. I'm not here saying to you that all medicine is bad, but I'm saying that know what the difference is between medicine and pharmacia. Understand the true understanding, overstanding, if you will, of um, the workings of nature, the workings of herb, the natural ways of healing versus the chemical, um, processed, created, synthetic, pills if you're taking every kind of pill nothing seems to ever cure your air and we will deal with fucking telekey which was a song in which uh, george was trying to tell us some positive things you can check that song out and maybe jump ahead of me if you think you can uh but uh i digress so medicine yes 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 in the word itself you find the dubious s and c trick well how do we know that it's a trick? Because you have medicine and medical. Well, medicine has the S sound and medical has the K sound. Well, which one is it? Is the C in medicine a C sound or a K sound? You only have one root. So now let's go and look at some of the roots here. Medical, uh, the root med to measure or to consider, limit, advise, take appropriate measures. Okay, the Greek, medomai, to be mindful of, medein. To rule, that's right. Everstan or Vimad physician, but in Latin, meditari to think on, reflect, or consider, and that's directly where you get the word meditation. So, medication, medical, medic, medic, all of these things are uh, things in which they're still thinking, they're not sure, uh, they're contemplating. Okay, they're, they're, they're trying to figure it out still, and this is why it's called the medical practice. And yes, we're going to use a, a hard K sound because the C is a false letter, as uh, I showed and proved in the, spell of spelling, in the spelling spell video, uh, where C is an inserted letter. Uh, it stands for half a cipher. C stands for cipher, and it really is half a cipher. Uh, because it's a circle cut in half to create a C. So again, we have the uh, the spelling spell deep, deep within uh, medicine, uh, pharma pharmacology, and all things having to do with the healthcare industry. So uh, it's keeping hope alive instead of keeping you alive because medicine comes from the fallen angels. Yes. The fallen angels taught mankind the workings of the roots. Azazel and crew. You can find it listed in the book of Enoch, in the first book of Enoch. Just read the first chapter, uh, and as you get down into it, you will find a listing of several of the fallen angels, also called the watchers, and what they gave, quote-unquote, to mankind. And you will find that it was the working in, uh, of roots, uh, herbs used for curing and for cursing <laughs> that the fallen angels taught to mankind. That's right. The fallen angels are given credit for this all the way back in the book of Enoch, which is a credible book. Yeshua quotes from the book of Enoch, although it is not in your Bible. Obamacare, Obamacare. <laughs> and again, I got to thank my man, Prophet Charlie, uh, the wise elder, for coming up with that clever one right there he's a he's a tourist and his mouthpiece is a beast and he uh comes up with some good clever ones uh as well and of course we will point a little bit to the signs before this is all done and i'm going to do one on the signs on the good the bad and the ugly and, and bad and ugly is two negative things and the good is only one so 
I would say it's two thirds negative and one third positive because there's reality to it and we can find it all throughout scripture. And I'm going to show you the, the, the hardest, most credible place to find it. And that's in the beginning. Uh, and then we're going to uh, dispel the common thoughts about astrology uh, in that teaching, which should probably be the next teaching. <clears throat> I don't know. Y'all, y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. But, uh, the medic owl or medic owl practice, again, uh, making the patients have to have patience because they all are waiting for a cure. So now let's jump into this. Okay, before we get into pharmacon, the problem of medicine. Well, lots of problems, but... Lots of problems, lots of problems concerning medicine, but uh, we're going to deal with some of the key issues, some of the biggest problems concerning medicine and its use and, and misuse in modern society. Now, Isaiah 31, 1 through 3 was going to be my reference point for this, and I didn't have sense enough to get it ahead of time, so if you will, just give me a second here. Uh, we can find that quickly. Jeremiah and Isaiah, we know, is right together. Isaiah 31, 1 through 3, if you have your Bibles, you can follow along too. If not, if you abhor the Bible, well, you should probably check yourself. You shouldn't abhor nothing. Well, you get mad and want to spit and, and have a fit. If I was talking about the Quran, if I was talking about a comic book, you wouldn't be upset. So don't get upset now. We're going to deal with this just for a second. For so many of our people do ascribe to this alone. And this is, is, is for their benefit as well as for yours. So have some love. So 31. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help, and stay on horses, and trust in chariots, because they are many, and in horsemen, because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise, and will bring evil, and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers, and against the help of them that work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men, and not God, and their horses flesh, and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down, and they all shall fail together. So the trusting in your science and your knowledge, going back to the book of Genesis, if you didn't get it then, uh, Isaiah reiterated there, trusting in man's knowledge is foolish. Trusting in Paul, because he's a man and his knowledge is foolish, but you must trust in I am eternal, the infallible word of the Most High. <clears throat> So uh, in Genesis, I had many, many, many references in Genesis. Genesis 1, 11, uh, Genesis 1, 29, Genesis 2 and 9, Genesis 2, 16, and Genesis 9, 3 through 4. Uh, these are all references to how you should eat the green and eat the green and leafy herb that bears a seed for your meat. Okay, they're all right there. Now, the problem of medicine, again, we see... We see some Project Genesis popping up here. Every time you, you, you hear sin, <clears throat> synthesizer, synthetic, know that it comes from the original word sin. That's how language is comprised, especially our language, which is, ooh, Lord have mercy. Webster and them did they thing in reaching back into antiquity and taking uh, verbs of power, magic words, words with certain significance, and doing little tricks like spelling sin, C-I-N-E. So we have the caduceus, or is the C a K, or is the C a S in this case? Because if the C were an S in this case, caduceus would be pronounced in a way that would uh, really give more insight into its nature, seduce us. But again, the dragons of flame. Now, now the Temple of Hathor uh, is something you should check out if you have doubts about the archons or the uh, serpentine beings of antiquity that Genesis talks about uh, as being possessed by the angelic being Lucifer. Okay, that's how it went down. Now, you have the Hippocratic Oath to a false god, Hermes, Mercury. Again, uh-oh, Project Janus, because Mercury is... The planet the, that rules Gemini, the double, the twins, the double helix of DNA, you see the two snakes. Let's get down, y'all. Okay, now a hypocrite is double-tongued. Uh-oh. Hippocrates, take the, the Hippocratic oath to the god Hermes. Uh-oh. 
Hypocrite is double-tongued, double-mind, double snakes. You wonder why your medicine is poisonous, <laughs> the double snakes. You wonder why it helps you a little bit and hurts you a little bit, the double snakes. Obamacare, okay, you want to check it out because it is going to epitomize this to the fullest. And there are those researchers who have been talking for some time about uh, H.R. 3200, uh, that talks about class two implantable devices in section two five two one page one thousand and one paragraph one. Now that's what's out here now. Now I remember when this information first arose, when people first talked about the possibilities that Obesey had something in his uh, Obamacare about an implantable chip. Well, I I abhor a dude uh, and peep his game so much as as a slick talking. Uh, uh, turkey type of brother uh, that I could just tell that he is. I'm not surprised about any of this. And, and so, uh, you know, you should look very carefully into anything that he presents if you're not already of the overstanding that he is indeed uh, one of the men that the Bible refers to as an, an antichrist. Christ. There shall be many antichrists in those days, is what the scripture says. Before the coming of the big man, the one that you will know him undoubtedly, uh, uh, um, I'm sure, uh, is is not to be questioned. You know, we will all know who that guy is. But this guy here, he's he's like the guy that introduces the opening act. And uh, excuse me, he's like the opening act that opens up for the main event, the main event being the Antichrist and the opening act being one of the Antichrist, one of the many Antichrists that shall arise in those days and if it were possible would deceive the very elect. Now in Genesis 9, 3, um, we understand uh, about the uh, rules and laws for eating, not eating the things that have blood and eating the green and leafy herb that bears a seed and how that is what we should use for our meat. And when Jesus says, physician, heal thyself, both of these point to the farm as the source of healing foods or medicine. That means that there, you know, the original idea for medicine was that it would be grown up on the farm. When farm happens to come from pharmacy. Yes, yes. In reality, as I did more research, the first one is pharmacy. Well, well, actually, the root word of pharmacy is the first one, and that root word is pharmaros, and it's found in the book of Enoch as the name of a fallen angel. Pharmaros is where you get the word farm from, where you get the word pharmacy from. Big farm turns to big pharma. And again, uh, we have the duality of the snakes. Uh, again, um, Sometimes it's called the staff of Asclepius, who is another derivative or another version of Janus, Gemini, Mercury, uh, in the left hand, and and he holds his staff. He holds his staff in the left hand, and I, I'm glad we had a chance to look at right and left, so you understand the difference and why there's significance among the illuminated ones, the so-called illuminists, the so-called illuminati, to do things on the left side. It's called the left-hand path that you travel. Uh, if you go down the path of secret societies that uh, openly ascribes to Lucifer as being the god. Well, uh, Asclepius, uh, Gemini, Janus, Mercury, Mercury is the messenger of the gods. He's the guide of the dead, the protector of merchants, Shepherds, gamblers, liars, and thieves. That's whose staff this is. Do you please tell me you get that? All right. Patience, patience. Now, the AMA, the American Medical Association, that's their symbol. Of course, this has to do with commerce and negotiation, as we saw. Gemini, the hustler, has to do with commerce and negotiation because it takes two, baby. Then we talk about Marvin and Project Janus. Oh yeah, we oh we kicking it into gear. For those that have ears to hear, let them hear. Pharmacia. Now we say pharmacia, but is the C a S or is it a K? Well, according to the book of e Enoch, we have uh, pharmaros, which became the root of Greek words such as pharmakia, pharmakon, pharmakias, and pharmakos. These likewise became the roots of English words like pharmacology and pharma. Cutical, but we say pharmaceutical, and pharmacist, which should be pharmacist. 
<laughs> but uh, Hermes is a Greek god. Now, now Hermes is the Greek name for Mercury. All right, Mercury is his Roman name. So the god of medicine is named after something poisonous to the body. Mercury is a poisonous substance to the body. In the Ethiopian translation, if Enoch is correct, an angel called Pharmaros taught charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots and made men acquainted with plants. That's directly from the book of Enoch, uh, Enoch 7 and 1, I believe, and Enoch 8 and 3. Amazarach taught all the sorcerers and dividers of roots. Now, uh, when they break down that word uh, from the Ethiopian into the Greek, they come up with the pharma rose, uh, or uh, the uh, pharmakia, the pharmakon. Now, uh, the, there are wings. The wings on the staff. They so, say, well, Mercury was swift because he was the god of messages. He had to deliver the messages fast, so he had wings. It has to do with the fallen angels. All of the gods are representative of the fallen. So wings, like the red wings, on the red wing symbol, I used to always wonder, red wings of what? Okay, it's to represent the fallen. Okay, the fallen who became the serpent, the red wings. That's what you're seeing right here. The fallen who became the serpent, the double identity of both, uh, the, both being a fallen angelic being, which has nobody, ain't nobody, ain't nobody. And also being the snake or the reptilian being which it inhabited, the beings that ran Atlantis. This is the true reason that snakes are used to represent wisdom and the true reason why the secret societies it, uh, 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 um, adhere to this belief that they're going to create a new Atlantis. It's for their masters because they're truly ran by neither black nor white, but by something more like green behind the scenes so the true reason that snakes are used to represent wisdom on the pharaonic uchat which is the uh the the cobra often that you see on the pharaoh's headdress right at the front of his headdress right by his pineal gland they say oh well, it represents the pineal gland because it's shaped like a snake man them secret societies especially them brothers from them secret societies have you conscious brothers they had me that way too so i can't talk too bad about you but you know they they really try to twist us up fam and, you know, at some point, you know, you know, you need to feel some type of way about that. You know, your own people trying to use you and, and twist you up. All right. Matthew 10 and 16. Uh, let's let's jump to that right quick. Now, uh, again, more more things showing that the snake is used for wisdom. Uh, look at the Board of Education tree. Again, it was the the. Uh, tree that the serpent told them that if they ate of, they would gain knowledge and wisdom and be as gods. Then you have the Dogon knowledge who said that, well, you know, the Dogons who had advanced knowledge of astronomy for a civilization that had no uh, technical instruments, no scientific instruments, they really understood a lot about what was going on in outer space. And they said that they learned it from, uh, they said that they learned it from the uh, snake-headed beings, from the uh, beings who crawled up out of the waters and taught them about the stars. And the Dogon knowledge relates to Gomar Az Dubar as well, or Lucifer, the light bearer, G-O-D, of this world. And, of course, we have the Apple logo also relating to the tree of knowledge that you find for the Board of Education. And all of this is directly related to the generation of vipers, the serpentine beings, the serpentine fire, the earth, wind, and fire, things about themselves.